Take my bride, let's go for a ride in my new fangled automobile. Just where we will go, nobody knows, but it's sure a great way to feel. Behind the wheel of the speed me to steal, it's my new fangled automobile. Hello and welcome to Vintage Car History. I'm Wild Bill. In today's world, superstar athletes are quite ubiquitous. People that are highly skilled in their respective sport and are paid well to perform. They're also paid even more to endorse or even lend their name to a product. Of course, the world of auto racing has its fair share of superstars. Yet the man who was arguably the first superstar of auto racing was already a superstar before the first car race ever even happened. This French sportsman dominated his field in four different types of racing and became amongst the most famous athletes of his day, Fernand Charon. Charon was born in Angers in 1866, a modest town in western France. He was a small man of light build weighing about 125 pounds soaking wet. He was a restless young man who was a natural athlete, and his gracile frame lended well to speed in many sports. He began to enter races by the age of 14, both track and field and cycle races, performing well in both. He started his winning streak the next year at age 15. His first victory was in 1881 at a local cycle race. He won the race and the grand prize, two and a half francs and a live chicken. Now armed with a ready supply of eggs, he entered local track meets and proved to be a good distance runner, winning several local meets in 1881 and 1882. In 1883, he won his next bicycle race, the Western Championship, and he continued to win that race for the next five years in a row. He also raced in his hometown of Angers, winning races three times in 1886, 87, and 1891. He moved to Paris in 1888 to head up a bicycle dealership, selling Clement bikes and trikes. He turned out to be good at business as well as racing, and he sold various cycles with much vigor. He continued racing at this time, both cycles and foot races. His list of major race wins grew quickly, winning championship after championship. By 1895, he had over a hundred victories under his belt and was the most famous racer in France and amongst the most famous in the world. On the business side of things, he expanded his cycle offerings to include the Humber, becoming the only Humber dealer in France. He got into horse racing as well, jockeying several winning horses as well as owning and training winning horses ridden by other jockeys. So when cars began to race, he was all over it. He opened a Paris car dealership in 1895, offering Panhard and Levisor cars, Peugeots, and Didion Boutons. He, of course, continued to race bikes, but in 1896, he began his auto racing career. The first auto race he entered was the 1896 Paris Marseille Paris, driving a Didion Bouton three-wheeler. Unfortunately, his car had engine trouble, and he was not able to finish the race. Undaunted, he changed his steed to Panhard and Levisor, and for the next six years would almost exclusively drive a Panhard. He entered several races in 1897, and though did not win any, he did complete them all, and his best finish for the year being fourth at the 1897 Paris Deep race. In 1898, he proved unstoppable. His first race of that year, the Paris Amsterdam Paris Grand Prix, began on July 7th with 25 cars entering and took six days to complete. Driving his 8-horsepower Panhard, he won the race, beating Leon Gredo by some 20 minutes. A few weeks later, he drove his Panhard in the third Grand Prix of the ACF, the Auto Club of France, again finishing first out of 25 drivers. He raced again at the Paris-Bordeaux, this time finishing second. His last Grand Prix for the year was the Paris-Nice race, which he won driving a 6-horsepower Panhard. Fernand was the man to beat, and he made Panhard the car to beat. In 1899, he raced in the Paris-Bordeaux, winning it for the second time in a row. Sales of Panhard soared, and by 1900, Chiron was not only one of the most recognized sportsmen in the world, he was also quite a wealthy man. He was amongst the first athletes to use his fame to help sell products, and was paid handsomely in royalties by the products he endorsed. Bicycles, tires, sportwear, cars, whatever product he gave his blessing to, sold like hotcakes. His last great car racing win was quite significant. In 1900, Gordon Bennett, 
the newspaper mogul and racing enthusiast, established the inaugural Gordon Bennett Cup race. Racing from Paris to Lyon, Chiron drove a powerful Panhard, a four-cylinder beast producing some 24 horsepower. He was only some nine miles from the finish line when a St. Bernard ran onto the road and was hit by Chiron. The dog came wedged between the steering gear and the chassis, and Chiron lost control, leaving the road, going over a ditch and through a field before getting the car back on track. The only serious damage to the car was that the water pump broke loose, so his mechanic held it in place while Fernand drove the last few miles to victory. Fernand Chiron was the most successful sportsman of his day. His fame made him rich, and he would be involved in the founding of several makes of cars, the CGV, the Chiron, and the Alda. His racing wins include 13 in track and field, 506 on bicycles and trikes, 5 in cars, and 534 in horse racing, either as a jockey, owner, or trainer. With 1,058 racing victories under his belt, Fernand Chiron truly was the first person that could claim to be the fastest man alive. Thanks for watching Vintage Car History, and we'll see you next week. Peace.